we're going to have our tarot reading. Yay. <laughs> and uh, Corinne is going to do a live tarot reading for me. And uh, she will set this up and ask me what I need to, to do for her. And uh, we'll do it. Okay. As comfortable as you would like to be, you can state your actual full name or just the name people call you by. Ted Torbich. Okay. And your birthday, but not the year. September 18th. Oh, a card flew out. <laughs> oh, that's always good. It is. And it's, oh, I would like to tell the listeners that I'm using the Alistair Crowley Thoth deck. And I pronounce it Thoth because he is the god of thought. And I happen to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We may call him Tehute if right. you like. Yes, I have a, uh, interestingly enough, I, I have a uh, tattoo of Tehuti. Thoth. Oh my goodness. Yes, I do. In his ibis headed form. Is that on your Facebook page? Uh it probably is somewhere. <laughs> okay, amongst well, my I'll be amongst hunting. my pictures, yeah. I have all of my tattoos are Egyptian. Wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely. They're they're probably on there in case anybody's interested, you can go and look on my Facebook page under my pictures. Or they're probably your pictures of my tattoos. If not, I'll go put some up there later on. Yeah, you're obligated now. Okay, I have to. So, <laughs> if you, so I'll you. put my pictures of my tattoos up there for you. <laughs> so the card that flew out, funnily, funnily enough, and uh, this is going to be very funny, the whole show, I'm sure, <laughs> because the synchronicities lift our vibration. They make us laugh, and it makes us enjoy life more. So the card that flew out was the sun, and as we know, the Egyptians worshipped Ra, the sun god. So we were just speaking of the Egyptians. The sun card in the Crowley deck means illumination, which is self-illumination through self-knowledge. And if we want to go technically, let's go to Abraham Maslow. Let's go to his self-actualization instead of going to Buddha or Jesus. Let's look at Gandhi. Let's look at people that really made a difference in the world through love. Because we don't <clears throat> have to have these high, lofty, God-like beings that are invisible that we can't see necessarily because we have examples of these beings on our planet. And I'd like to mention John Lennon. I'd like to mention Bob Marley. So what I see this as flying out for you is self-illumination. Uh, illumination means brightness, light. And I am a great and deep believer in illuminating all shadows. And that's what the sun does. So give me some feedback. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that that is probably one of the overarching themes of my life, um, I guess, is to try and shine the light in the darkness and to try and uncover things that are hidden uh, in a way to bring them out into the open so that people understand how the world works and how things around us are. It's part of the reason why I do this show and why I do my uh, videos, so I, I think it has relevance. Now, if you were a client, and I understand we're on the air and you don't have to answer this, but if you were a client, I would say, ask you, were there secrets or hidden things in your childhood that bothered you, even if it was just that you saw the world and no one else saw the world around you, and you tried to point things out, I would say that this has been a passion from a small child and that it was a developmental thing. What do you think? Uh, hidden things from my childhood? Uh, definitely. Uh, there were very dark uh, and hidden things uh, in my childhood for sure. Um, I think uh, that's, probably, uh, uh, that's probably pretty accurate, yes. And then you are, I got another card, haha. -ha. And it is dominion. 
And for those who know, it is Mars in Aries, which is the warrior. And on the card is a purba. Purbas are ritual knives in, in Buddhism and other religions that banish demons. And of course, we can replace demons with darkness. So having dominion over darkness is part of your life lesson. It certainly goes with the sun as well, because the sun mm -hmm. also has dominion over darkness. So uh, exactly. uh, I would say that if I were to give you some feedback on that, I would say that both of those cards together would indicate that I'm on the correct path for overcoming the darkness that had overshadowed my life as a child and to have uh, gained a uh, certain uh, perspective and dominion over that that it does not Indeed. hold a weight on me anymore. Indeed, and not only that, because you went through hell <laughs> and discovered heaven, you are now teaching others. Uh, the third card I drew was the Prince of Discs, and you, sir, are a Virgo, a disc in the tarot. And what this means for me, literally, the quote is, making it real. And that is exactly what you are doing, my friend. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say that's, that's absolutely accurate. Uh, uh, what I do with, uh, my various media is to try and make things real, as real as they can be, and sometimes that is not the reality that we live in. Uh, sometimes it goes beyond the reality that we live in to something that's greater, so, yeah, I, 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 w I would agree with that. Do you have any questions? Well, I did have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask that, that we could put forward for the, for the, um, for the reading. Mm -hmm. um, basically, they all have to do with uh, um, the future of my actual day job and how that's going to work out because there's a lot of flux there. And... Uh, my future in my media, um, and in general, on my reaching goals that I set for myself. Okay, excellent. Now, one at a time. So, your uh, real your day job. Can you describe it for me in a word? You don't have to be very specific. Just oh, uh, I don't mind telling you what okay, it is. Okay. I, I work for <laughs> I work for the postal service. Excellent. Okay, so I would call that government work personally. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. All right. The first card is the devil card. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, boy. Now I'm, now I'm really in trouble. <laughs> You're working for the man, man. <laughs> well, let me explain the devil card, please. Um, the devil card on one level is occultism, meaning hidden things, right? But on this level, I believe it is saying materialism, okay? Um, and you are asking about a job. You are asking about a way you earn an income. And the first card that describes the question is the devil, which is materialism. Does that make sense? Absolutely, because okay, um, everything attached with the, with the job is connected with materialism because mm -hmm. everything needs to be paid for. <laughs> Yeah, and you're working in a structure that is the government. I mean, you look at the full picture, right? Yes. Okay. So on you now is the chariot card. It's uh, for those who know the Merkaba. So the chariot card is saying, your car is ready, sir, and it's souped up. All you have to do is turn the key. So with strength in the environment it looks like you do have a little bit of an identity crisis to go through before you are ready to fully commit yourself to full-time media well that's interesting so if there are things shaky at the day job it's definitely for a reason it's to shake you loose hmm that's something very interesting to think about. I never put it in that perspective before. That's what I'm here for. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, you had two other questions, and I don't remember them. Uh, well, 
the future in, in, in media, my future in media, whether it be radio or video or what have you. Yeah, I like to call it media because that'll cover my butt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it is all about making new ties for you. It's, and I know it's so hard when you have your own show to go out there and find other people with shows and have that community supportive network um, because you're so busy with your own thing. So how is your uh, networking going as far as other people on your level or above? Actually, not so, not so good. I mean, I, I wish it would be better. Um, I, I, I could definitely uh, branch out and try to network with other, um, with other people in the business that uh, share the same kind of interests that I do. Uh, I think that would be a, a very positive thing that I could do, yes. As a, um, hmm, I believe in soul groups. I believe that there are certain tribes that reincarnate together at certain times to make certain missions happen. And I believe that your soul group is out there calling for you. And it, all you have to do is, um, you know, elbow rubbing or whatever that stuff is. <laughs> and, uh, connect up with the other people and it's a timing issue as well because you are working very hard you don't have a lot of time to branch out so you might even consider investing in someone doing it for you okay that's very good advice thank you and that's where I would really put my energy because that is where you're gonna have most of the fire and connecting with others and creating like a mission. Well, I can say this that that uh, I'm very happy that I've become uh, uh, very well acquainted with with uh, some um, some few uh, of the people that I've had on my show and some few people that uh, do other uh, radio shows as well that I have a lot of respect for and that we both uh, or that we all uh, sort of fall within the same uh, camp, I guess you could say. Uh, and then that would be akin, I guess, to uh, the soul group that you talk yes. about where yes. everybody is kind of in sync with one another when it comes to where we are, where we're heading, and the, the means and methods by which we want to get there. Precisely. And, and when I when I say mission, I mean like action plans. Should you choose to accept this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ten seconds till self destruct. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, mission impossible. Love it. That's right. And you know what? Your personality wouldn't have it any other way. Well, I, th uh, yeah, I I tend to be. I tend to be an all or nothing kind of person. Uh-huh. Yeah, in that way. It's like uh if you hand me a a very difficult task, it's either I'm going to do the whole thing or I'm not going to do it at all. Uh so in that way, if I do take on a task, I'm I'm usually very committed to seeing it through all the way from beginning to end. Your fire and your passion, and you follow that, and it leads to compassion, which is co-passion, which is a group of people that are passionate. And I guess that's where I need to um, to actually put more focus on that. So I'm going to make a note about that, about uh, networking and reaching out to other people. Well, I think you'll have it on your radio show. You can listen to this anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> I like notes, though. I don't know about you. But Virgo. Like <laughs> <laughs> and lists. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those are, they're both very Virgo things, I know. And you're ruled by Mercury, which is also Hermes, so you're an excellent communicator. And I've also found, uh, because of the Mercury because of the mercury influence that uh, it's also highly enhanced my intelligence i'm not trying to be egotistical when i say not that at all. it's just not that i'm very intellectually attuned um yes, sir. uh it's very easy very easy for me to break things down and analyze them and 
to understand the meanings, etc. Uh, and that what that's what makes you such a good teacher because people need that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'd like to think so. And uh, having that having that said uh, reinforces my beliefs. So thank you. Excellent. And the last one was reaching goals in general. Okay, let's look at that. Well, um, there's a situation here between your beliefs in what prosperity is and the alchemy of your soul reaching a higher level. So it's not that they're in conflict or paradox with one another. It's that as you become more you, your finances rise to meet the true you as well. So pursuing pursuing my true passion and going in that direction, make a commitment to go in that direction, actually would uh, um, would enable me to to reach my goals better. More than better, lightning efficiency, and you will love that. You will totally get off on that. <laughs> it's lightning <laughs> efficiency. It's an instant manifestation. But I must reiterate that you must cross the bridge of having somewhat of an identity crisis and to deal with this new self that you are becoming. It's your truer self, but there's always fiction, friction involved in growth. Maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit. Okay. I could give you some feedback on what I think. Well, it says that you can be very methodical and efficient, and that works in a 3D world very well. Okay? When you are getting more into your heart space and you are on a mission, like the Blues Brothers were on a mission from God. <laughs> yes. Then your consciousness is raising in vibration. And that is when we kind of detach from the systems we've been taught to maneuver. You have excellent defense mechanism systems to ha so that you developed to survive this 3D world, this small little materialistic world. You're now rising above that, and it doesn't mean you're leaving the materialistic world, but it means you're leaving the way that you work in it. Okay. Well, I think that that absolutely goes in line with where I want to go because uh, obviously there's only so far that we can travel within the environment that we live in now and under the rules and edicts of everything that is around us and the 3D reality we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I have a strong, a very strong uh, desire and motivation to explore the, um, the expansion of my consciousness and to actually uh, try and advance myself in that regard because I believe that that is the most important path to be followed. So absolutely, I, I concur with that 100%. And my heart agrees with you too. And I hope the listeners' hearts are also being stirred. Uh, I would also like to mention about uh, people who aren't necessarily psychic by nature or haven't worked on it. I just saw a video with Adam Kokesh where he is doing DMT which is what your pineal gland, your third eye, produces that allows you to be psychic or to punch through the subconscious into higher dimensions. So I just wanted to mention that there are certain ways that people can do it, have the experience, even if they're not going to work on it for 30 years like some others have. I think uh, I think that those are valuable tools um, that people can use to uh, get in touch with uh, those outside. Uh, um, I hesitate to use any terminology because they're also loaded with baggage. But 
entities okay. or forces or whatever you want to call them. But also, uh, everybody needs to be aware that that you need to you need to do preparation before you decide to to uh, go along those paths, because if you are not in the correct state of mind, mm-hmm. uh, they can be very uh, bad for you. So yes, more- and it it's really like having a short Kundalini experience, and if your subconscious is haunted by your childhood, by, you know, what's going on in the world, if your subconscious is not clear and healthy, then your the kundalini is a volume button for your fears. It will manifest your boogeyman. And, you know, that's the best way to face anything, but most people crumble at that point. Well, you're not prepared for it. Uh, when you when you engage in that, so obviously people have a very, I would say, uh, people who are unfamiliar with with engaging in those kinds of activities, uh, un- unfamiliar with delving into that particular area. They have a rather simplistic view of it, and they think that simply by partaking of a particular substance, you're going to you're going to automatically have this wonderful, great experience where oh, you well, get no. in touch with... <laughs> no. I've never read the stories of the wonderful experiences. Even Sting wrote in his autobiography that he had a really hard time on ayahuasca. But his wife, she was blissful. So, you know, it, the most of what I hear is the kundalini volume button for your fears. Most of what I hear is my ancestors attacked me or something. And then later I had a breakthrough. And that's what it is. It's going to bring up your stuff so that you can face it. And I think that's a gift. But I also think you should be called to do these things and not just do them on a whim. Yes. So yeah. just, just you know, just the very practical uh, idea of saying tread with care. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's probably something that's good for everybody to know anyway. And I have been in a a bubble most of my adult life because I've chosen to be mostly around spiritual people who, so I'm not exactly acclimated to speaking to open groups of very different levels of knowledge. And I guess that would go along with the fact that you are very in touch with energy and subtlety and things of this nature which would enable you to be able to better communicate with people I try (laughs) well I mean that that seems to be something that would be a prerequisite for someone who was um, practicing as a psychic and as an intuitive so Mm -hmm. yeah I would think the thing that I found so rewarding about being a psychic for so many years is the counseling of people in my 20s, and you know, everybody that goes through the ringer pretty much in their 20s, I was learning through their experience and the advice I was giving them, I was following it, and so we were all growing together, and it was a beautiful experience. It, so- it sounds great. And, yeah, uh, so I'm not I think- saying, I was extremely dysfunctional. I'm a recovering codependent and an adult child of an alcoholic. <laughs> Well, I think that's that's another thing too, and I think it's very important uh, for everybody who's listening to understand that everybody has been injured, everybody has wounds, everybody has things that have impacted their lives in a negative way, and we are not defined by them unless we allow them to define us. They and are our challenges. Exactly. Yeah. And I think part of the message of the show tonight should be that we need not allow those things to define us as human beings and to be a grid that we have to follow for the rest of our lives, that we can break out of those molds and that we can actually live our lives away from the troubling things that have come and hurt us and wounded us and done things that have hurt our spirit, have hurt our body, etc., that we can overcome these things. I would like to mention the author John Bradshaw 
So if you're having difficulties with your subconscious, your family, your childhood, even now with family patterns or your role in the family, John Bradshaw has all the keys. He's the tool. Okay, great. So um, we're going to take a break now. Um, thanks, Corinne, for for doing that. I think uh, it was very, very on the spot and definitely gives me a lot of food for thought for my immediate and further future. So uh, right now, we're going to take a break, though. And I'll just remind you that I'm talking to Corinne Wilson, and you can find her at her website, occultpriestess.com. And that's all one word, occultpriestess.com. And you will find her various services And you can also find her on YouTube. She does videos on there. And her name on YouTube is Occult Priestess, all one word. And you can find her channel on there as well. So uh, if you want to look her up and see her material, I strongly encourage you to check out her two websites. Now, uh, when we come back from the break, uh, we're going to get into some more of the studies that she has done, particularly into sleep paralysis, and we can look at that as far as it relates to paranormal phenomena, alien entities, uh, 